Hello everyone, Pastor Greg Pufal. A couple of announcements to bring to you. One, if you haven't been utilizing our mail slots, we would ask that you please do that. Either when you're coming to church, before church, you would go and you'd find your name and then take out what is inside of there. Or after church, you can also do the same. What you will find mostly, every single week, you will find a Faith Alive in there, which gives a lot of our information as far as what is going on, announcements that you might need that would pertain to you. Also, an announcement for those who have children in the Faith Quest age group. That's our Sunday school. If you haven't used that program yet, if you haven't sent your children, it's an encouragement for you to do so. If you have, it's another encouragement to continue to do so. And the announcement that I gave on Sunday was that that program begins at 9 o'clock sharp on Sunday mornings from now on. Not going to begin at 9.10. We'll begin at 9 o'clock. So please have your children in their desig designated spots or special spots uh, starting at 9 o'clock so the program can begin. So we're entering in that very special time of year once again. I'm not talking about the holiday season, although that's right around the corner too. I'm not talking about, for, for those of you, maybe you've already seen the commercials, the McRib season. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a different kind of special season that we have right around the corner, and that is the Charlie Brown season. The time when we see all the different specials on TV, like that great pumpkin Charlie Brown or the Christmas special, whatever it is. I was thinking of, I think it's a Christmas special, where Charlie Brown's feeling a little down, and he goes out, and there's Lucy in her little makeshift psychiatric help desk. And for one nickel, for, for five cents, she's going to help you with your problems. So Charlie comes, and he sits down. And then what does Lucy do? She rattles off all kinds of phobias that maybe are bugging Charlie. Now, I don't know if all of these were in there, but some of them maybe you know. Like arachnophobia, the fear of spiders. Glossophobia, the fear of public speech. Cynophobia, the fear of dogs, or of course this one that we all know so well. Hippopotamosisquipidialiaphobia. Say that ten times fast. That is the fear of long words. Now maybe you've heard many of those before, but there's another one that I want us to think about today, and that is philophobia. You can almost hear the beginning of Philadelphia. We know that to be the brother, brotherly love, the city of brotherly love. So philophobia, fear of love. Could anybody possibly fear love? I looked it up. And sure enough, there was an article that I saw once that was entitled Seven Reasons Most People Are Afraid of Love. And after seeing some of those reasons, it started to make sense. Reasons like real love makes us feel vulnerable agree with that. New love maybe stirs up past hurts. Maybe it gets you to think, well, I, I, I love this person, but maybe they're going to hurt me the same way. Real love, with real love comes real pain. Uh, you think about if, if you really love someone and then they get hurt, you also get hurt. And then there was one that was interesting. It was, it was love is often unequal. It made perfect sense to me. If you start thinking about the reasons why some people may have that philophobia, the fear of love, then for today, I want to take it a step further. Because there is another phobia that is out there. Theophobia. Theo, meaning God. Fear of God. And at first, it kind of makes sense, but then you put these two together, and you, you realize from 1 John chapter 4, what we hear, God is love. It starts to make a little sense, doesn't it? Why would somebody fear God? Well, you read through the Bible, you see some of the amazing things, the fearful things that God did, the way that he maybe used his army to destroy the wickedness of some people, the flood, you can think of that. You can think of, of the time when, when this God destroyed two cities because there wasn't 10 righteous people found in either of those cities. You think of the time when God allowed the earth to open up and swallow an entire family because of the rebellion against God's leaders, or the time when a husband and wife were struck down dead because they lied about their offerings. Definitely a time when you can see theophobia, Fear of God. 
How could you not fear that? You know what this God says? He says this, and it's probably a passage that you know, Isaiah 41. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. We've already seen what that righteous right hand can do. Just think of some of those stories that I brought up already. How can you not fear that God being with you? It's because that righteous right hand poured out all of that wrath in a very specific place. That righteous right hand pounded nails into his son. That righteous right hand made it so that he could save you by not saving his son. That righteous right hand went out to put that wrath on Jesus, causing Jesus to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why all that wrath? Why all that, that punishment? Why forsake your own son? Because, because God is righteous. Because God looked and he saw all the sin of the world, all the sin that has been committed, even the sins we haven't done yet, and God knew something. I have to do something about that sin. Why did God do that? Because God is love. Because that anger was poured out on Jesus, that Righteous right hand does something for you. He upholds you, as we heard. He upholds you with his righteous right hand. He picks you up, kind of like a father, a loving father, will pick up his son, his, his child, maybe even like a baby, hold his baby and show nothing but love, gently holding that child. That is the love that your father has for you. That's the love that is made possible because of what your brother Jesus did on the cross. Is there fear in love? with God's perfect love, his perfect love that he has for you. He tells us there is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out fear. God has perfect love. Perfect love for you. It's what caused him to do what he had to do on the cross for you so that his wrath would not be poured out on you, but instead was poured out on Jesus. Now, I mentioned earlier about the internet site that had the seven reasons why people maybe are afraid of love. And that one that I mentioned was kind of interesting, that love is, is oftentimes unequal. How true is that when it comes to the love that our Father has for us? We give Him nothing. He gives us everything. And yet, yet you know who doesn't care about that unequal love? God. All He cares about is that He loves you. May God uplift you with his righteous right hand to know that love that he has for you, that love that will never change, and that love which will never leave you. God bless your day.